Hey, how's everybody doing today? It's Naturalist Michael coming to you from uh, Three Elms Park. It's a park just outside of Independence, right on the outskirts of town. If you know where Fairway's at, it's not too far away from Fairway. Um, I'm going to be doing some, or I'm going to be having a talk tonight about frogs and toads. Uh, I'm actually part of a frog and toad survey crew um, where we go out and we listen to four different kinds of frogs and toads. Um, we do this study to see what kinds of frogs and toads there are. Um, so the different kinds of varieties that we have throughout the state, there's quite a few of them. Um, but the main reason why we're doing it is to conduct a survey to see how the numbers are throughout time. Um, so this study has been going on since 1991 and it's been a consistent study with the Iowa DNR since then. Um, and like I said, we're going to be listening for frogs and toads tonight. Uh, I just heard one in the background. It was a chorus frog. It sounds like a frog that when you take a comb and you run your finger across the comb, um, it sounds just almost like that. Pretty darn close. All right, so frogs and toads. Can anybody think of what family frogs and toads belong to? Anybody? I'll leave you think for a second. All right, if you said reptiles, you were really, really close. They're kind of close to a reptile, but they're actually called amphibians. So amphibians, what that means is two lives. So the first part of their life, they spend um, in a certain state uh, as an egg. They start out as an egg. So they start out as an egg, um, and then they change into a tadpole. Okay, they turn into a tadpole, and then um, they will grow what did they grow in this picture can you guys see it they have legs on the front yeah you're right so they are tadpole with legs and then this next stage right here if you guys notice what did they gain after that yeah they got a back set of legs so they have the front legs now and the back legs um, these ones will still be in the water um, so they're still in that water part of their lifetime but once they get they get here they still have the tail so he'll still be in the water. But then what's really cool is these guys, the second part of their life, they actually live on land. Um, so amphibians live two different lives. Most of them, not all of them do. Some of them will only, some of them will stay in water for their entire life. So amphibians, some of the characteristics of amphibians, can you guys think of any? I'll give you a couple, a few seconds to think about it and see if you can come up with some good ones, because I bet you can. All right, yeah, so they have really smooth skin. A lot of them will have smooth skin and thin skin. Their skin is very, very thin. It's very permeable. So what that means is stuff can go through it, okay? So water can go through their skin, um, and they're very sensitive to their surroundings. So if something changes in their habitat, Usually amphibians are great indicator species, which means that they can tell us about our surroundings and tell us if something is going on and something is wrong. Um, so thin skin, usually they have smooth skin. Uh, they're cold blooded. I bet you guys got that one. They're cold blooded. So they get their energy from where? Yeah, from the sun, which is going down very quickly. Actually, I think it might've already set because it's about 8.30 here at, at Three Elms. Um, but yeah, so they're cold blooded. So they get their energy from the sun and from their environment around them. Uh, unlike us, we are, yeah, we're warm blooded animals. So we get our, we produce our own heat. Um, so we can control our body temperature much better than amphibians can. Um, another group of animals that's also cold blooded are reptiles. Um, another characteristic of amphibians is that they don't have teeth or claws um, so if you ever pick up a toad or a frog don't be worried it's gonna bite you because if it does it'll just feel like a little baby nibbling on your finger which I don't think it's gonna bite you um, so there's frogs and toads and then there's another group there's actually two more groups there's one other group that we have here in North America can you guys think of it I mentioned it a couple times already yeah, so salamanders. Salamanders is the other group. 
And the last group, which isn't, like I said, we don't have any of these in North America, but in other parts of the world, they do have these. They're an amphibian, a legless amphibian. So it's kind of like the snake of the amphibian world. It looks like a legless salamander, um, and it's called a Sicilian. Um, and they, they're pretty wicked looking. I would highly recommend you guys watch a video if you're at home where you can check out a computer because they're really, really interesting animals. There's over 5,500 different kinds of amphibians throughout our world. Um, so that's a lot of different amphibians. The biggest one is six feet long, okay? I'm about five foot eight with my boots <laughs> on a good day, okay? So they are about four inches longer than me and they are can be upwards of 140 pounds. And this animal is called a Japanese uh, a Japanese salamander. They're a very, very large salamander that spends all of its life in a cold water stream. And the smallest amphibian is the gold frog, which is about less than half an inch long. It's only about one centimeter is all. What is it? It's like 0.39 inches long is all. So they're not very big start my first run here at Three Elms all about the frog and toad survey. Um, how it works is I will be here for at least five minutes if not even longer than that. Um, I take down some data what the sky looks like, what the temperature is, um, what the time is, all of that good stuff and then I just listen for different kinds of frogs and toads. Um, right now I've only heard a uh, chorus frog and it was like one or two um, so they mustn't be out in too big of numbers tonight. Um, um, so the way that we judge how many chorus frogs are, are calling is not by numbers, but it's more by, uh, by sound. So if there's just a couple calling, it's rated as a one. Um, if there's quite a few calling where you can still kind of tell them apart, then it's rated as a two. And if there's a bunch of them calling where you can't tell the difference between who's starting and who's stopping then it's a three and obviously if nobody is calling then it's a zero we are at ham marsh and there's a lot of activity going on here um there is a bunch of spring peepers going on in the background um, they are small little frogs they're not very big at all they're maybe about a little bit bigger than your fingernail maybe your fingertip or so um so relatively small but they have a powerful a powerful call. Um, like I said earlier, they go peep, 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 and then they just keep going and going and going. Um, there was also a few chorus frogs as well, but the spring peepers right now are out competing them, um, and I don't think you can probably catch it on the on the GoPro today. But I'll be quiet for a minute or so. I'll turn off the light, and you can just listen to the listen to the spring peepers. All right, so we are at our last site at Cutshaw Park. Uh, it's south of Fairbank and north of Littleton, or north of uh, Jessup, sorry, just west of Littleton, actually. And uh, we're here. Um, there's not a lot of action going on right now. I think it's getting too cold. It's almost midnight, um, and it's probably about 45 degrees, which is a little chilly for frogs. I hope that you guys had fun coming out with me today, learning a little bit about some frogs and toads, mainly frogs, because I don't think I heard a single toad tonight. And we will see you guys later. Have a good day. Bye.